Some people believe that Jesus returned in 70 AD because of Matthew 24, 34, which says, Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. So how can we interpret that difficult verse? One key is to understand the way the word generation is used in the Greek because it's a little different than how we use it in English. Let's look at Thayer's Greek lexicon. To summarize, there's a qualitative use and a quantitative use. We're used to the quantitative use use, which is focused on a certain span of numbers, which might be 40 years, for example. However, that's not the only way the word is used. It can also be used in a qualitative way, which means a group of people that share a certain quality. So for example, one definition would be the several ranks of natural descent, the successive members of a genealogy. So that would be like a race or a family, or it could be a group of people that share some kind of quality in common. So an example could be a group of men very like each other in endowments, pursuits, or character. In the Bible, we typically see this kind of usage in a bad context, like a wicked and perverse generation, an adulterous generation. And it can also refer to a certain group of people that happen to be alive at the same time. So that knowledge is important because it doesn't limit the word generation to the direct audience that Jesus was speaking to at the time. I think it's also really important to look at at the whole context of Matthew 24. When Jesus says this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place, that actually happens in the context of the parable of the fig tree. Let's look at it. Starting at verse 32, it says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. I think it's also really interesting that the next verse 36 says, of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So it would be really peculiar if he is saying nobody knows the day or hour of his return, including himself, yet goes on to say that he's definitely coming back within 40 years to fulfill the quantitative definition of the word generation. So the question is, what signs is Jesus referring to when he said, when you see all these things, know that it's near even at the doors. Let's back up to verse 15 of Matthew 24. And it says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then it goes on to talk about how people need to flee to the mountains and not take any time to go back and get things because verse 21, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world and to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So we're seeing a context of time known as the great tribulation that starts with the abomination of desolation and leads to the most cataclysmic events this world has ever seen that are so intense that nobody would survive if God didn't put a stop to it within a certain time frame. Verse 23 and 24 talks about false Christ and false prophets. I believe that this ties in perfectly with Revelation 13, which talks about the beast and the false prophet, also known as the Antichrist and the false prophet. And then we see verse 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. In other parts of the Bible, such as Daniel and Revelation, we find out that this time period of great tribulation lasts three and a half years. And immediately after that time, on a day and hour that we don't know, then Jesus will return to gather up his elect, which we call the rapture. So circling back to the original question, I think the solution is actually really simple. The generation of people that are alive Live when the abomination of desolation happens will be the same generation that will see the return of the Lord after the great tribulation. Another way of looking at it could be the fact that once the abomination of desolation happens, human history is not going to go on in its current condition for another thousand years. It's going to be a rather rapid series of events that leads to the return of Jesus Christ and the establishment of his kingdom.